Hi everyone and thanks for tuning in to another interview. Um, today I'm thrilled to be joined by um, Liz Velour, who is a radio presenter and also author of um, Taking Flight, The Cage Bird. Um, Liz is a mom of four, four kids who are all living out of the country, Liz. <laughs> and um, uh, recently Liz interviewed me on the Conscious Living show um, on the radio program and uh, we had a great chat on menopause and what I loved was um, Liz your approach I guess I'm very used to the typical questions about menopause whereas you came wow. at it from a different angle which I found just so refreshing and um, you know and it's uh, thanks for coming on and um, just chatting today because I think you've so much wisdom and information that we can we can all learn from um, so I think you know we'll chat about life menopause your thoughts etc and I know we were chatting earlier about personal awareness and how important that is um, at this stage so I don't know if we you know it's what saved me personal awareness of course I had no clue what it was like I I didn't until 1994 and you know like everything else like if you're going to wake up you need a good crisis you know what I mean so mm. I was no different because why would you bother if everything's going well I mean why would you bother go through a huge big change when everything in the garden is hunky-dory so I view the crisis of my life as the ones that have brought me the greatest peace and joy eventually mm. Mm. you know so once you get through them once you get yeah. through them, yeah i had a lovely old spiritual friend some people might remember paddy mcmahon and he wrote under the name patrick francis and paddy always said liz hail the irker they're your teacher <laughs> and just, at the time it was a little difficult to digest mm. but you know i realize now as much as you might like it um, but when you see what it is you're being asked to look at, and I was being asked to look at all these things when I was going through perimenopause, so everything was being turned upside down at that particular point. You know, I had teenagers who were fighting to be heard, and I had me who had learned as a child to keep me safe to shut down. Mm. So, you know, so when you shut down as a female, you shut down all those feelings, all those emotions, all those ideas, you know, everything is just a lid is put on them. But you see, to me, children are our spiritual teachers because, you see, they still have the magic and the wonder in them. They still have the aliveness. Mm. They still have the black and white, like, you know, I know better than you and you think <laughs> you're going to control me and you know they still have that energy it hasn't been mm. beaten out of them yeah they have that buzz don't they they, they have, have that, that buzz. buzz for life that it yeah. hasn't yeah as you say it's still there it hasn't been knocked out of them no it hasn't so what they're really showing you is where it has been knocked out of you mm. so mm. instead of you trying to change everything there to make them conform to you to what keeps you safe because they see that's what you did before you always shut things down so going through menopause you're a bit like a teenager you see you can't shut it down anymore mm, it's mm. making you like kind of wonder like yeah I was like Shirley Valentine looking at the wall and thinking hello wall is that it you know I mean, that was me when I was going through that. That was me. Like, I really did look at it and think I sat and people were telling me Shirley Valentine is the funniest film ever. I sat in it and cried. I said, oh, my God, that's me. Yeah. You know, yeah. did you ever see that film? I have seen it years ago, years ago. I remember I do remember thinking parts of it were very funny, <laughs> but oh, I probably I must watch it again, actually, because I'd say I'd look at it in a different light now, say to watching it 10 years ago or so, you know. Well, you see, you start to look at your life at that stage yeah. and say, is that, is that it? Like, am I meant to be working all day long and then coming out here and then picking up after this one and bringing that one there and doing this and being treated like a doormat and and you're you're doing all these things because you're going to make them happy somehow or other you're going to make them all happy mm. and they're getting more disgruntled by the minute 
and you're getting more disgruntled by the minute. And the whole thing is just this crazy mess until you actually see what's been played out. And mm. once you see that, then at least you have a shovel and a spade. You know where to work. You know where to go. You know what to do. You, you know that the only one you can change is you. Yeah, and yeah. The belief in that is amazing. That I don't have to change any of these characters outside me because I've no power to change anyone. And I read that in Anthony Domella's book, Awareness. Mm. And when he said that, I was ready to hear it. Yeah. And I was so relieved to hear that if I change something in me, that my outer world would change. Mm. And that's where it all began. So that's where Anthony DeMello awareness, teenagers and menopause all combined together. And, and do you think, because when you look at that and you kind of, you know, like I would, I would think very much like you now that yeah. um, the only person I can change is myself. But I think, and it's such a, sim, you know, it, it's a, it is a simple statement, but don't you think, Liz, it takes years to actually get there, to actually, <laughs> or it takes something uh, I'm to- I'm still learning. Mm. I will be going into my box still learning i will every single time i'll see another aspect there won't be a day goes by you kind of think mm, i see it again you know what i mean i see where i'm holding me back here or uh, what like what's that fear about and then i always say fear is always about ego ego is afraid of something so what are you afraid of why are you afraid to speak that to that person you know you're going to get a strong reaction from them and then you stop and think, well, why are you worried about the strong reaction? Because I fear conflict. I've never liked conflict. Yeah. And the reason I don't like conflict, that goes back to childhood. Okay, so am I going to allow this person to control me like I was controlled before? And I think, right, is this person, is this worth the fight? Mm. Is it worth it in this situation? Is it going to change anything for me? If it is, then I learn to speak about it. If it isn't, and it's only somebody that's passing by the street, I let it go. So yeah. I'm not, I'm choosing where I speak or where I don't. Mm. There's a conscious, you see, the thing is with the whole thing that I learned around that time was that, see, there's a powerful reaction inside my body. And I'm the only one that knows what's happening in there. Because everybody outside there would have thought I was the calmest, most peaceful person ever. No one would have suspected the turmoil that was in there. Mm. Mm. So when I would talk to people about it, I'll always say to them, you're the only one that knows because no one else knows you like you know yourself. Yeah. yeah. Mm, and you're true. the only one that knows. And even though there were nine of us in our family, Every last one of that nine, if you put them into a room and said, what was your relationship to your parents, to school, to whatever, every one of us would have a different. Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, when we were with my mum when she was dying, we were all in the one room. So you had me at the upper end who had experienced her as a young woman and the youngest at the lower end who had experienced her when she was exhausted. Okay. Yeah. So we had very different perspectives. Yeah. 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 I, and I, that's... I, I think, you know, we, the only one we owe it is ourselves to yeah. take a little look inside because it's our life to live with as much joy because there'll always be joy and sorrow in equal measure. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But, and the sorrow is in there and we learn so many things within it. Yeah. So if I don't look at joy as being the only one, if I look at them all as just ways of being present in a moment, rather than always wishing for the joy. Yeah. yeah. If I'm wishing for the joy, I'm missing out on where I am right now. And I'm missing out on being present right now. I'm missing out. I'm way out in the future or way back in the past. Mm. I mean... None of us can control the future. No, no. 
yeah the, yeah the past is gone i was i was listening to um oprah on one of her super souls recently she interviewed um is it scott peck you know the author of a road yes. less traveled and they talked a lot about his opening paragraph which he basically starts off with life is difficult and yeah. he talked about you know why he started off that way and so forth and and what I they, there was a great conversation around it and it was kind of you know it was when you read that statement life is difficult yeah but if you if you kind of have that understanding that then um you appreciate those precious moments more yeah. and oh. I think like you were saying um I mean, we've all had events in our lives where uh, that have caused us turmoil or changed us in some shape or form. And when you're in it, it's not easy. But when you get to the other side of it, then you are a different you are a different person when you get to the other side of it. You know, and you know I have had friends who've gone through, let's say, a friend whose husband died young mm. and she had two small children. And she said of those years while he was dying of cancer, and she said to me, Liz, I never knew I had it in me to survive yeah. this one. Right, so, yeah. And we don't actually know. It's our difficult moments. It's almost like what they say about the diamond. I mean, it has to be put under so much pressure to produce yeah. a diamond. Yeah. But it, yeah. When, when I was put under the pressure of when, see, what happened was when I was going through all those emotions at the time, I realized that I was facing my life through the beliefs, habits and ideas of my parents, my teachers and my everything. Right. And I realized that everything that was going on inside me was actually their words. You can hear your mother coming out of you. You can hear your father coming out of you. You can hear your teacher. You can hear their fears. You can hear all these things. And I realized that I was nothing more than a puppet. So if you say a certain word to me, I'm upset. If you say a good word to me, I'm up. If you say whatever. And I realized I am just a little body of reactions that are going on in here. And when I read that, if you look at the reactions and ask the question, is that really true of you? Are you really stupid? What have I got? You know, or what have I done so far that it just says that this is not true? Mm. And I began to look at all these little reactions or whatever. But once I saw what was going on, I'd take a little step forward. And I would either speak about something or do something. So I began to learn new skills. I began to learn. Now, the interesting point that I found in it, as I changed and as I began to find a voice, my quiet child began to find a voice, but as I began to find a voice, I was able to put a boundary for the louder child. And what happened was she was looking for that. She was actually looking for the boundary. She was looking for the safe space. She was looking for you to be a leader. She was looking for you to be a role model. But what she was seeing was somebody who was afraid of conflict, somebody who was afraid of speaking up, somebody who was afraid to stand up to authority. But she was my amazing teacher to show me the importance of finding your voice. Mm. And all that time around menopause is almost like your opportunity to be the hormonal teenager again. <laughs> to find out what your feelings really come to the fore mm. then. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. you feel you've blocked out, yeah. you begin to, they begin to emerge during menopause big time. Yeah, we during um, menopause week, which was um, back in October, I did an interview on that on kind of past trauma and how mm -hmm. if it's unresolved and you you know you have some kind of um, issues outstanding from mm -hmm. the past, they will come back in menopause whether we like it or not. They will come back, and it's literally like banging on the door. You got to deal with me, you know. You got to Absolutely. deal with me. <laughs> You've been able to hide me up to now. Yeah, but not yeah. Here anymore. Yeah. And the of it is, if you see this, if you see what it's saying to you, if you've seen it saying to you, do you know what, Liz? You were this amazing little kid, and you loved to have fun. You loved to be out in the fresh air, and you loved to play. You. Yeah absolutely adored nature and here you are now at this stage of your life 
blocking out that part of you. You loved to be able to sit there, sing your little songs and do your little stuff or whatever it be. And you were full of fun. And now where is it? Life has gotten so serious. You are only thinking of the negative things that can happen. Well, you know, you're not able to really let go and have a bit of fun with your kids. Oh, no. And then Mm. what these are showing me is how much I had lost. My children were showing me how much I had lost. And the day I realized my children were my spiritual teachers and the children in the school where I taught, Any time I got too serious, they absolutely made me have it because they were able to bring me back. And children will bring you back to that childlike fun where you Mm. have the capacity to lie in the sand and do these angels and the capacity to be an idiot and not worry about getting things wrong. You don't have to be perfect anymore. Yeah. the, The frozen person tries to get everything perfect. And isn't isn't like if you look at, um, say, you know, for most women, when they go through menopause, perimenopause, it tends to be at a time when either, you know, maybe their kids have left home or their kids are teenagers. And so it's kind of um, in a way. It's, it, it's very difficult to be able to be in, this, in that space because when you have all of these emotions, which can be quite intense at, at times, and the, you know, the, the, the symptoms that you know, can be quite tough for many women, um, it's very hard then to be able to think, well, a bit of fun on top of that, that ain't going to happen. Oh, you're, you know? so, you're in such a state at the time Mm. i mean i'm going through this at a time when some of mine were beginning when i was really in the throes of menopause i was going through a time when some of mine were leaving home for good and they weren't just leaving home they were leaving the country yeah like my first daughter headed to japan and i remember standing at the airport with her and she wasn't completely sure of all the arrangements that were being supposed to have been made for her but I remember giving her a big hug and said, every part of me wants you to be here. But I know that if you stayed here because of me and because I'm so upset, yeah. I would push you in through that departure door because you've got your life to live. Yeah. But, but the thing is, here you are with your beloved child and there's an ending in that mother-daughter relationship. She's gone. She's out to Japan to live her life. And you're wondering, like, where am I? <coughs> no, where am I? In this? Now, only a couple of months later, right? Her brother heads. He's gone to New Zealand. <laughs> New Zealand, right? And then shortly after that, like, they came back for my other daughter's wedding, and I had all four of them. The last time I had all four of them together was in two thousand and five. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. Gosh. You've got, you're going yeah. through all this of they finding their way into their lives. Yeah. At the same time, you're finding your way home to your life. Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. the time when you're able to flip it and be able to see, you know, I've done my job, even though I've made mistakes and done all the various things, I've done it to the best of my ability. Yeah. Right. But now, who who am I? I mean, I know when I went into a shop to buy clothes after they were all gone, I didn't even, like, what do I even wear? Or, like, what is even my style? Or, you know, like, where do I even begin to find who I am? Mm. So you just do it in little bits. You begin to find out. You begin to take notice of the things where you kind of say, God, I really like that song. Or... I really enjoy being here or, you know, you begin to notice things you hadn't time to notice before. Mm. Mm. And it's your own self discovery is going on here as they're going through theirs there. Mm. Mm. And I guess, um, I, 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 for me, um, my kids are quite young, like eight up to 14. So I have the whole teenager, the puberty versus menopause thing going on. But I find that um, I would have different outlets of friends, right? You know, friends from school, 
college friends, the mom friends, all that type of stuff. But it's interesting. I have my running group and um, the running girls that I run with and they're completely separate to my family as such as in I don't know them through the kids I don't know them yeah. through the husband my husband I know them through me and it's yeah. we're, we're always kind of saying it, the, the friendships there have come at a different stage in our life because um we're there because of who we are as opposed yeah. to somebody's someone mm. you know somebody's yeah, I'm, wife I'm a different generation my mom had no life outside the house and I saw that I was recreating that pattern. Right, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. I was doing the same. It didn't appear as if I was, but I was. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed that. So I had some friends, but there were friends that I had, all right, but it was all about children. It was all about this. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I had to begin that process again and mm. start new, which was very, 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 very different. But do you know the other thing too, Catherine, I used to find was because I had shut down on emotions and I shut down on feelings, like I put a good seal on them. When they began to come out, they were coming out like detonators. You know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't know which end of me was up. I didn't know because this was so unlike me. I mean, it was almost like I was throwing grenades. I was like... The two-year-old who hadn't the language oh, for the tantrums. Yeah, for, yeah, the toddler tantrums. Toddler yeah. tantrums were yeah. my menopause tantrums because I I had no outlet. Because, you see, when you shut them down completely, yeah, you don't have the language to express how you really feel. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're not familiar with the expression. Because my generation wouldn't have been familiar with that. Mm. you would have always to be told to shut up and put up yeah you know? yeah so it's learning the language of your feelings and learning to know that they are to be sneered at at your peril yeah they are your feelings this is how you feel this is important to you and if somebody else is uncomfortable with it that's their discomfort yeah but it's your feeling it's a very important feeling and one that you're going to acknowledge but mm. you just learn to wait till the grenade calms down and then you express how you feel mm. Mm. whereas you know through the reaction in the body you are sick to kill because yeah. the emotion is so strong because you've held on to it held on to it held on to it you don't want to express and then one day there'll be one thing that's said and that's it you're gone yeah 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 you know yeah there's always a trigger there's going to be something that's going to yeah. open the pressure cooker and oh, yeah. the, the, the steam will the steam will yeah. come out yeah absolutely, and, absolutely. yeah and, and just we, like when we were talking there earlier one of the things that i always say and i'm really really passionate about this is and because it's because i see a lot of women who are lonely like menopause can be lonely and I often say like that's um, you know I guess and they, maybe it's part of my generation or maybe it's the stage I'm at in terms of you know say with my running group which um, um, I got involved in over the last two two and a half years but having a social outlet whatever it is is so important I think as you go through menopause because what I'm finding is is that you know, sometimes, um, you know, women need a different outlet to oh. be able to voice what's going on and how they're feeling. And often what happens like like and, you know, we, we I, I sometimes could be in a bit of a bubble thinking that, you know, there isn't a taboo about menopause. But in all reality, there's still a huge taboo on menopause. And yeah. for yeah. that fact, a lot of women don't even want to sit down and have the conversation with their best friends as to how they're well, feeling the you know is if you're only beginning stages and you don't know how it's truly going to affect you you can be scared of it yeah you can be yeah. scared of what's it going to do to my job to my family to my this how am i going to be how am i going to be affected by this do you yeah. know what I mean? like i was quite fortunate in it that even though i had these feelings i wasn't going around permanently with hot flushes or whatever i was really really really
really lucky, you know. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I was also part of a group of friends. Don't talk to me about that. I don't want to know about it. You know mm. what I mean? Really, yeah. Really, and it doesn't exist. Yeah. So it was like a different. But to me now, it's that ability to see what's happening inside your own body and to recognize that maybe, you know, I would take, I did things like this in that I took myself off to Ackle for about four days on my own because I didn't want to be near anybody. But what I do in those times that I take time out or if I go off on a long walk in green nature or whatever, I am taking time out for me to recalibrate. Yeah. yeah. So that I'm able to listen to what's going on inside mm. here and be either it communicated or not communicated to see by the time I've sorted it out, I may not need to say anything or I can communicate whatever it is in a different way. In a calmer way. Yeah. Calmer way. But the pause, that pause to, it's like, when you hit that reaction, you up in a lift. You're like in one of those, you know, the skyscraper lifts that in New York or in the, Toronto. Like that bullets. <laughs> right? But, you know, when you wait for the lift to come down, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, it does in this pause moment. And when you can pause and hold a breath and wait till it calms down. And when it calms down and that space that you're in when it calms down allows you, just allows you see what's happening mm. and you can always communicate what's going on in a very, very different way. The solution mm. is always found in the pause yeah. because it creates a space around you. But when you go into the detonator, you go into ego and you battle it out with somebody else's ego and... I mean, nothing can be found there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The very yeah. thing you want is to be understood. Mm. And you want to feel that you're heard, right? Yeah. But when you go into ego, into the lift going up and you're battling it out there, the very thing you don't want is disconnect, but that's exactly what you get. Yeah, yeah. If you don't wait for the pause. If you don't yeah. wait for the pause, yeah. you, you yeah. get the thing you fear most, the yeah. disconnect, the dismissal. Oh, it's that time of the month again, or oh, you know what? It's one of those, is it? You know, and that dismissal is enough to drive you crazy. Yeah. You know, and but when you can just hang in there for the pause and hang in there and just say, no matter what, I'm just going to take a breath, I'm going to remove myself from here for a while, and then wait till it calms down and just mm. then voice what's going on for you. Mm. It is very powerful. And I think that's where um, I would find it's really, really important for women to take time out. Um, and, you know, like sometimes the whole self-care thing, I, I sometimes think um, has become a kind of a word that's not maybe isn't the depth behind it isn't really realized yeah. as in maybe there should be another word to it but I would find for many women in menopause it's it's detrimental to their symptoms if they don't have that time out in terms the of Lord, the good lord needed to come at me from a different angle right the my Achilles heel would always have been children and probably because my own childhood experience right okay, okay. now when I discovered by my being a taxi, taking my kids everywhere, by my feeling that I needed to be there for them or they needed this or needed that or needed the other or whatever it was they were. And therefore in that thing, I wasn't looking after me. Mm. When it was flipped on its head and I was told, by you doing too much for your children and you doing things for them that they're capable of doing for themselves, mm. you are creating dependent children. Yeah, your yeah. kid will not thank you for the fact that they now, because you think you're so important to them that you have to do everything for them and you have to clean up after them and you have to bring them here and bring them there and you are responsible for, oh, I better not ask them to do this because they have to study for their leaving cert. And so it goes on, right? Yeah, yeah. By they not participating within the house, 
the very thing that you want for them, that they feel an important part, that they feel contributors or that they feel they have skills, that they have capabilities, by you doing too much, you're stripping them of that need. Yeah, yeah. And I said, oh my God, I never looked at it like that. Yeah. Now, yeah. when I looked at it like that, then I began to say, no, you're you're able to you've made an arrangement to do this and you're able to do it I know you're able I remember my son being on the computer to do it like in the morning or whatever he was meant to meet somebody in town and he said oh god mom can I have a lift can I have a lift I said well you know the score on this that we're changing this one around can I learn the lesson next week and I said <laughs> no <laughs> this is you know what I mean but the thing about it is they learned so many skills because I backed off. Yeah. Them yeah. Survive in Toronto, New York, mm. Melbourne, Wellington mm. at the moment. But when you do too much for them, it's telling them they're not capable. Yeah, yeah. When you insist on doing everything, you, the message you're given is you're not capable. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think... I realized I was doing that. I said, yeah. hey, now I can understand. I can actually look after me. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll have space to look after me. But I needed it to come at me from a different angle than, mm. of course, I was told by all these people, oh, you have to look after yourself. If you don't look after yourself, you can't look after them. Right? Mm. And it was always, you can't look after them. So my thing was like, oh, I need to be doing more. So I was a human doing. I mean, I wasn't a human being. I didn't stop to feel, I didn't stop to do anything. You know what I mean? I was just a doer. Let me do this for you. Let me take you here. Let me get you this. What yeah. is it? If you need this, you can have it. Like, oh my God, will this help you in this? I can get it for you. Like, we find a way. Don't you worry about it. I find a way for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But there was no room for them to find a way. Yeah. There was no room for them to solve anything because I was there. And I think, I think, do we, is, do we fall, do all mothers fall into that or is it the Irish mothers <laughs> where no, you try? I think it's yeah. all mothers, is it? Yeah, all, yeah, it is because like, if you listen to the program, I was listening to Ryan Tuberty talking to somebody uh, on the Late Late Show once. It was, he was a footballer and he said his mum had died recently and whatever. And he said, she was so amazing, he said. Do you know, she never thought of herself and she'd be there for us all the time and she would be there cheering us on and doing this. And Ryan said, isn't she, wasn't she just a fabulous mother? And I was saying, oh, good night. No wonder <laughs> we're as programmed as we are. When you think that to nearly not, to negate yourself for able-bodied yeah. individuals, and tell, tell me that that's good, that that's yeah. money. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to say to him, I wanted to scream, and say, Ryan, would you wake up? Yeah, no, yeah, not. yeah. That is, that, and that's setting the bar very, very high, isn't it? Yeah. In terms of, for all us mere mortals. <laughs> I know. I landed into a church one day and I was going in just to light a candle, but suddenly there was a funeral and there was somebody speaking. I said, I can't leave now so speaking and he said you know up to last week she even sent a text to say can you remember the bins so they all followed the coffin and they left all their water bottles on the front pew on the front pew right and I was thinking oh my god she's not here to tell them to bring it with them <laughs> you yeah. know like yeah 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 do yeah. we kill do we kill ourselves do we Mm. doing for individuals for her so the best thing we could do i discovered for them was to get them to do as much as they were able to do yeah and then yeah. they actually felt good about themselves yeah yeah because they were now getting skills they were now able to survive they were now able to go places you know okay yeah, yeah. life skills life skills life skills yeah I, yeah I i had to go through huge huge fear because i was such a control freak like i'd be first outside the school door just to make sure that my child didn't escape you know what i mean i was a super <laughs> control freak so i had to come out of all of that you know mm. in the mm. oh you know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's perfect timing. It's a, it's a, it's a hard one, isn't it? Like I'm very conscious, and and I, I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Mary Ryan. I mean, she talks a huge amount around this and empowering ourselves and our yeah. children and so forth. But um, 
it's 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 a great thing to be able to do um i i have to say i you yeah you're looking they're seeing monkey see monkey do yeah 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 so like i realized you've got to find a voice liz you've got to find a way to express these things because i was watching I was watching some of my kids not having a voice, not being able to say what they wanted, because that is what they were witnessing. They were witnessing me like that. Yeah. So as yeah. they began to see me begin to find a voice and me begin to say something. And I remember when I did my first trip to India, um, which was huge. Now, this was huge. I was leaving my children to be abandoned forevermore, never to be seen on the planet again because I was going on this trip, right? And when I got as far as India, I was deported because I didn't have a visa. So I was sent oh, back God. to the visa to go back. So you can imagine the learning. Oh, oh my God. You yeah. ima- just, we won't even go there right now. <laughs> but anyway, my one of my daughters said, Mom, I have the visa arranged for you. All you have to do is go into the Indian embassy and we can get you back on that plane again. And we did. Now, wow. she, her thing was that in my my youngest daughter said to me, it was an interesting thing. She, we, uh, when I came home, I went up and we were having ice cream and we're skipping down the road. And she said, you know, she said, before you went to India, all I thought was that I was going to have a life like yours. And we know what that's like. <laughs> but now that you've gone, now I see it's going to, it's, it's so much different. Wow. And here was I thinking in my head, Oh, you'll be at home all day long, every day long, and you're going to be there for your kids, da, 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 da. And here's in their heads was, show me how I can live my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, God, that is, yeah, isn't it? Imagine. Yeah. yeah. So that would have been uh, 2001. She was 13. Gosh, yeah. So that's what she was, this is what she was saying to me. I'll yeah. never forget it. I will never, ha. Huh? You know, yeah, here, yeah. Like I saw that. But this important thing, I mean, I know when people say be your authentic self, well, who is that? Like, I'm kind of, it's another word. It's another buzzword. It's be your authentic self. But like, and I understand what it's saying, but it's, when will I ever know? Like, all I'm doing is chipping away. Mm. All I'm doing is chipping away at something. And I know it through a fear. And then I know it through what I'm afraid of. And then I move through that fear. And then I discovered that there's something else there. Yeah. So yeah. that movement through the fear <laughs> that leads me to another part of me. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, that's menopause in a way, because as in, you know, the whole, you, you do go through different stages, you feel different things, different things come up, you know, whether it's physical, yeah. mental symptoms and so forth. And, and I think, you know, that rocks your foundations. It does, it kind of, you know, things happen that maybe, you know, have never happened to you before. Or you feel things that you haven't felt before, which can be very, very scary. But I think it's yes, because your world, you have been in a way I was able to make my world a little bit black and white. Mm. But I tell you one thing, when you hit menopause, it was like, where am I? What planet? This was like in a flight <laughs> to a faraway tree. What planet? <laughs> I'm you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. you know. Where but I think I? it's 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 it's, you know, I'm conti- I'm always talking about it's getting once you get a handle on the symptoms and once you kind of get your treatment protocol together, you know, whether that's HRT therapies, lifestyle and so forth, that there is a huge awakening and nobody, I, there's no one I've ever spoken to who is, who has said that's not, that, that it, this doesn't happen. It does happen. We're living proof that it happens. Exactly. Well, isn't it exciting though? Like, isn't it exciting that this black and white life where you were able to control and make everything according to wherever you planned or whatever it be, and the whole blessed thing gets upended on you completely, which is scary, right? Yeah. Then you begin to discover, like a new you, you begin to discover, Mm. like, 
I am not that person before. I am not that person that was easily intimidated. I am not that person that feels I have to go there just because she's going to have a tantrum. I am not yeah. that person. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember once, like, I used to go to visit an elderly aunt and she'd ring me and she'd say, I'm so lonely, I'm so lonely, I'm so lonely. And I'm here with the four kids and trying to <laughs> do whatever I'm doing, right? And I would go in. And I remember once going in and there was a lady with her and she just said, why aren't you going? Because Liz is here. And I just thought, are you for real? So anyway, one day she rings me with the I'm so lonely. And I say to her, I really can't go in. And I could feel the guilt was coming in spades it was being lathered on like butter so anyway about five minutes later she rings is that you mary i realized i was top of her list she had a list of individuals of people she was ringing i was not the most important person and yet up to then i would have been guilt ruled my life yeah guilt and fear ruled my life mm. amazing you know yeah. what I mean? And yet when I came out of this at the other end, it it might appear, but I'd say, hang on a minute, do I really want to do this? Is this important? Yeah, does this person really need me or is this just, you know, whatever? Mm. And so I can go in that particular way. Do yeah, you know what I mean? and the, yeah, and that's where you 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 I I think you become much more of a no person, as in you're able to say no. And not yeah. feel uncomfortable about it. Um, but you're not you know, saying no like my previous no. Can't you see? I'm so exhausted. Yeah, yeah. Can't you see? Have you an eye in your head? Like, yeah. as one daughter said to me, Mum, your job is to say no. Mine is to chance me are. Yeah. <laughs> Was that the same 13-year-old? She's pretty no, profound. She was <laughs> My job is that's what she said to me. Yeah. My job. And this was she was my good child. She was my one <laughs> that I least expected. But because she was learning to say no through me, she was learning to say no too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As I began this be able to say no to things, right? See, I was addicted to approval. Yeah. My mm. addiction was approval. I had my whole, whole sense of self through what other people said or thought about me because my self-esteem was in my boots and in a way too my self-esteem was also caught up with my children that if I gave them all these things and if I did all these things for me they I would be loved by them mm. but in actual mm. fact if you keep giving and doing and you don't take care of you the thing you the want from them you're not going to get yeah yeah and there's you're nothing not left for you then there's nothing left yeah exactly yeah, yeah. So the addiction to approval is a huge thing with people all over the world. And yeah. it's that need for it that has you saying no to things that are important to you. Mm. Like you will also say your need for approval can stop you getting a promotion because you'd be afraid to upset that person. Yeah. yeah. It, it comes at you in different angles. It's not just this thing of saying no to something, you know, I'm saying no to somebody. It's you're actually saying no to opportunities, to things that are so good for you. You're saying no to. But mm -hmm. the other thing too is when you are offered certain opportunities, you also your ability to say no is also equals your ability to say yes. So when something good is coming your way, to feel God, I can actually say yes to that. But yeah. the old you wasn't able to say yes to it because you didn't feel you were good enough to receive it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's the balance between yes and no is very important. Mm. So mm. I've seen a lot of the ability to say no, but I'm not seeing anything on your ability to say yes, to be, allow to, yourself to receive. To, to enjoy good, nice, enhancing opportunities yeah. and things that... Yeah. I have a friend of mine, um, oh, she's fantastic. She's got a... a, a fabulous attitude to life but she always says to me you know always say yes you know if you're asked to go anywhere within obviously reason but yeah. if you're asked to go anywhere if you're asked to for whatever you know say on an outing or something new that you haven't done before she's she would always be like always say yes 
you yeah. know, because you're kind of, you know, you're you're keeping yourself uh, stimulated. You're kind of, and That's plus right. you're meeting new people. You know, yeah. different. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, and it's a wonderful thing. Like, like I mean, I wouldn't be doing the radio show. It would never have been. I, I'm a bit like Baby Basket like this. I never really have this five year plan because in some respects, some parts of my life have happened and opportunities have come in that yeah. I would never have thought about. It was never on my radar to be a yeah. teacher. Yeah. Never yeah. in a million years. And yeah. yet came around through serendipity or whatever and opportunities came. Do you know what I mean? So mm. like, and yeah. certainly presenting the radio program, that definitely right in the book you've got to be joking, <laughs> really got to be joking. you know yeah and yet, yeah. no know, i think that that's and say for me um liz i i i went to college i studied business because most of my family did business i um i was in, i was yeah, I, I was in investment banking for over 20 years and now look what I'm doing, you know, yeah, um, yeah. It, I went completely back to my roots because um, I went, my mom uh, and my dad to a certain extent as well would have been very open to um, kind of looked at life through very, I guess, open, an open view and like, you know, I can remember them when we were younger, um, you know, being involved in, like, you know, going to acupuncture, going to reflexology, different things like, like right. that. And I, I um, probably forgot all that for many years. And then I went back to it when right. I was in my late 30s and I went back to college again. And, um, you know, so I think we can life like you're right like I couldn't have a five-year plan now not in a month of Sundays because if I look at what I've done in the last year or two god knows yeah. what's going to happen in the next year or two you know if someone said to me when I was 21 because I wasn't sporty at all that I was going to run a marathon I would have said yeah good luck to you and I ran a marathon a year ago you know so I think you have to be um we have to not be so black and white, as you said earlier. Absolutely. And the other thing, too, is if somebody had said to me on those earlier years that all four of my children would emigrate, that all my grandchildren mm. would be between Melbourne and Wellington. Right. Oh God, love you. I were, right. If somebody said that to me, my I would have felt I want to give up on life because I had the image of being around them and being mm -hmm. in their lives and being that mother that was going to be looking after their kids and doing their stuff or whatever. That was my vision. Right. That, that they would all settle down in or around or whatever. They'd all be in or around someplace, not flung to the far corners of the world. <laughs> but it mm. like one of my daughters came home for four years, but went back to Australia. But my abiding memory will be her little son turning around in the departure gates and giving me a little wave. And it's never easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but at least we have Zoom and we have FaceTime and we have all these things that are it's never easy. But I'll tell you one thing about Zoom. Zoom is good and I'll be chatting to the kids, but the kids are have their own little busy lives, yeah. right? Yeah. Now when I get out there, right, and I might only get out there or be if I go to Wellington, I'll pop over down to Melbourne, right? And I'll be with the kids there. And you'll hear the kids roaring and shouting, Emma, you're here, you're here. So it's absolutely, every second I am there, I am 100 yeah. present. Yeah. yeah. I enjoy every last minute and the laugh and the crack and the everything with the kids is, there's no comparison between it and Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I got you, of course. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. There's nothing like the physical hug and the bit of laugh, you know, the crack. Laugh. The yeah. crack. Playing, <laughs> me playing the card games with the kids or whatever. And God help my innocence. I was saying to my older one, Finn, I said to Finn, Finn, we'll go easy on Oshi. We'll go easy on him because of this. Like he's only so, if he was seven at the time, <laughs> he's only seven. I said, like that, he won't be able to remember where all the cards were. Well, he beat us hollow. I said, Finn, no mercy. No mercy. <laughs> and therefore we had this ability. They remember that. When they get here, I thought they're not going to be wanting to the Hill of Tara with me and up in La Cruz this year because like they're that bit older. They were plotting it on the plane. Ah, they that's lovely. Plotting it on the plane of the timeout that we have 
Yeah. But I tell you one of the things that came to me during menopause that I realized was very, very good for me and for the children. One on one time. Mm. That when you do one on one, there's only you and that one child. And when I did it regularly, I was able to see them individually and to see their individual, not in competition with their other siblings, or yeah. whatever, the one on one time. Mm. And that one on one time was so helpful to me and so helpful to them that the connection I built with them during our what we call our one on one time is what has carried us through being able to be deeply connected no matter where they are. Where they world. are, yeah. That's yeah. great advice, Liz. That's yeah. great the advice. One -on -one, yeah. The one-on-one -on -one time. And I used to have this thing, what we called was a well day. This was at Christmas. And they even practice it out now, no matter where they are, at the well day. And the well day was a day I took them out of school before Christmas. <coughs> and we... It was a day that we were well. We didn't need to be sick to be out of school. Okay. And we headed a bus or dart or whatever. And I would take just two at a time. And we headed into town and we saw Santa and we saw everything. And we went to a film and we had something to eat. And that day was absolutely focused on what they loved. What? Not what okay. I loved, what okay. they loved. This had nothing to do with me. This had got yeah. to do with me. And my son said to me, he said, do you know, I still remember the excitement of wondering what day is she going to say to us? It's her well day. And he told them what day it was going to be. But one morning I go in and say, get up, lads. It's your well day. Wow, that's fantastic. And did you always do it around Christmas, Liz, oh, or no? It was always Christmas. It was always Christmas. It was always around about Christmas because Christmas had the Christmas films on for children. Okay. It yeah. For kids. It had the windows. It had the shops. It had, yeah. Yeah. you know, Santa's window. You know, it was magical. Lovely. So That's always, lovely. It was always around about that time. But they didn't know when yeah. it was going to happen. And yeah. they didn't know what day in December was going to happen. But, but it was one day I would just say... And the absolute joy would, and the coming home, the chat, and you'd sit there on the tram and the chatting to each other, the two youngest, the two older ones. And, but they still do it. They still do it. It's great. Yeah. It's yeah. a lovely idea. Lovely yeah. idea. But you see, the thing is my changing and be, being able to get less serious mm. meant that you were coming out of being that parent that was always either directing, ordering or whatever. And all children love fun. All yeah, children yeah. love to be able to play and to be able to stop and play. So coming out of menopause, I was coming back to that Liz of that kid. That kid that could bring in the balance of play. Yeah. I, yeah. Was, I was finding her again and having the crack with the kids. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Mm. Why some grandparents will enjoy their grandchildren more. Yeah, yeah. Because the bank has allowed them to have a bit of fun. Yeah, exactly. They, and they can, they can, you know, there's less pressure. There's, you know, yeah. the it's not, think, as it's not as intense. It's not as intense. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be as the moments that I did the well days or the one on ones. I found that the behaviors I was worrying about all they stopped. Yeah, you and often that's hear that. Yeah. yeah, because once they got that the attention, the one on one one-on-one -on -one mm. meant they didn't have to fight for it yeah yeah or yeah. behave in certain ways to be heard yeah yeah oh god yeah there's loads of that get, goes on in my house three boys yeah. <laughs> great crack yeah. i noticed with me that the only way i got heard was when i ended up sick in hospital okay yeah so i was in for marriage just surgery every 10 years yeah. And it was and like the only way I gave myself permission to be rested mm. was when I was in hospital. Mm. I mean, it's the madness of what goes in here. Yeah. The Her madness of the program. So like to me, when all these feelings are coming up in menopause or whatever, as much as you might say, oh, can I not get through this? Or like, does it have to be like this? Just know that just sit and rest and rest yourself within it. 
in somewhere and take a bit of time out away from the others just yeah. take a little bit of time out in nature take a walk on mm. a beach do something <clears throat> doesn't have to be major yeah but take yeah a bit of time out for yourself yeah yeah and, yeah. Go and just acknowledge i am feeling really tough it's tough right now and i just need to get out and whatever it is that does it for you it could be running it could be walking it can be in nature it could be a hot bath whatever it is that does it for you that is possible for you to do you do it yeah yeah great you advice know. liz um it was love it was lovely talking to you we definitely oh. have to do We'll have to do this again. And I know that you're working on some new, some initiatives at the moment. So we're going to have to talk again about that too. <laughs> um, you know life, well, next birthday is the 70th. So life Wow, begins. oh my God. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that. How life has changed. Yeah. But if you embrace it, if you don't resist it, if you embrace it, there are good changes there. Yeah, yeah. There are changes there. There's, I'm like, you know, just thinking, like, where will it take? Like, you know what I mean? Where will it go? Where will it take you? So that it's almost like the old self is dying. But the old self needs to die for the new self. Self to come through. Yeah. Come through. Yeah. And, the old, and the old self is all that past stuff. all And it'll come up yeah. through your actions. Look. Yeah. It, it's your life. Yeah, and we've only got one, so we've got to live it right. <laughs> um, Liz, it was lovely okay. to talk to you. Thanks, thanks a million, and thanks to everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I'm sure you'll have gotten some lovely pearls of wisdom there from um, Liz. Um, I certainly did. So, Liz, thanks a million yeah. again. Oh, Thank you. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. <laughs>